We have a lot of practice to recap, so let's get to it on this edition of the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. You are Locked on Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked on Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Richie Bradshaw, and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Devils. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and making us your first listen of the day. And a special shout-out to my everydayers who are here every day. For the rest of you, if you have not already, hit like and subscribe and turn on notifications wherever you're getting your podcast, And stay in touch with the content by following me on Twitter slash X at RichieBrads36 and the podcast at LO underscore Sun Devils. These days, every potential new hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions will apply. All right. Apologies for the delay to getting this episode. I got sick for a day. Thankfully, I was able to bounce back pretty quickly. And then obviously, there's been a lot going on with the conferences and the movement and everything like that. So we got like three practices to recap here. And essentially what we're going to be doing is going through that, but also kind of coming to conclusions from what we saw last week, nice and condensed. This isn't going to be a crazy long episode. I'm going to try and keep it pretty much to what we normally do, because even though there's a lot to talk about, I don't want to sit here for 30, 40, 50 minutes going over everything in detail. Hopefully you guys will uh, be able to stay in the loop. I'm going to give you the important things, and then we should be able to get back onto a better habit once you know everything is calmed down. So let's talk practices. So I think at the end of the week, you ended up having a much closer quarterback battle than what you had seen towards the beginning of the week. It's not even so much that like Trenton Borgay just like really declined. He had started off the week really good, and I don't think that at any point he had played bad football. But Drew Pine definitely started to come back. And Friday and Saturday's practices, he looked like a better quarterback. He looked more comfortable. He looked more confident. And he was able to distribute the ball more effectively, even though he was working primarily with the second team offense and then, you know, getting subbed in every once in a while. Pine definitely was able to kind of come around towards the end of the week and get it figured out. Obviously, the stars continue to look like stars like Jalen Conyers, Elijah Badger, Cameron Scadabo, Xavier Guillory. Those guys are just certified studs. There's no, there's no dismissing what they're able to do on the football field. They're going to be a very big part of what Arizona state does in 2023. The offensive line, I feel started to settle down towards the end of the week as well. You definitely have started to see a little more continuity across the line. Um, But for the most part, I feel like things are starting to get figured out and guys are getting a little more comfortable. Now, there's definitely some weak points across the line. Um, I think the second team is definitely a step back. But I do I do think the first team has played very well, especially against the defensive line that has been so active and so potent throughout training camp and even previously to spring ball. It was a very good looking defensive line. And I think that the offensive line has been able to step up throughout the week and just continue to look better and better. I definitely thought that they controlled the pace of the Thursday practice. I felt like a lot of stuff went right on Thursday compared to any other day of the week for the offense. But for the most part, it felt like the defense was really what stood out throughout the week for me and like the defensive line, especially is where things started to look really good. They were able to control the line of scrimmage, dictate the pace of practice by stuffing the run and getting into the backfield very, very quickly. There were more than a handful of would be sacks. There was plenty of turnovers throughout the week. Bottom line is the defense had dominated, but as the week went on, I felt like the offense was able to start kind of catching up and keep a good pace. The running backs look really good. It's not just Cameron Scadabo. I think the Carlos Brooks has had flashes. I think Tevin White looks like a superstar. I think that you've had glimpses of Kyson Brown as well when he's been able to get on the field. Number 14 was making some plays. So I don't know how much we'll see the freshman, but 
he definitely looks promising. And again, those wide receivers, even even beyond Badger and Guillory, like Giovanni Sanders looks like a stud. Mel Constaval looks like a stud. Jake Smith looks like a stud. There's just depth here. And it's so exciting. It's so tantalizing. And you feel very, very happy about the situation that the Sun Devils are currently in at the wide receiver spot. The tight ends look good, too. Again, not just Jalen Conyers. But Messias Winston and Bryce Pierre have also looked very, very good. As a whole, the offense has looked good. It's just the defense has looked very good, which I don't think is anything that we saw coming. But, you know, let's go ahead and flip the script and talk about the defense. I already mentioned the defensive line. I think the linebackers have been pr playing pretty good. Uh, Crew Jackson, in particular, has been a player who has really caught my attention. And he stands out as somebody that I think could end up earning a lot more starting time than maybe we think or realize he might by the by season's end. I don't know if this is a full-time starter, but I do think that he's going to get on the football field a lot. I wouldn't be surprised if he did get some starts under his belt. The linebacker position is just a very fluid spot for me because you have Juju Mitchell and Trey Brown transfers who are likely to be the starters there, but I'm sure Arizona State is going to want to get other guys involved as well, knowing that Brown and Mitchell are going to be one-year guys like Crew Jackson and Tate Romney are both redshirt freshman transfers that are coming in. KV on Thunderbird, I have no idea how much he's going to get on the field, but a true freshman linebacker, they would like to get involved. Veterans like Caleb McCullough has been seeing a lot of time this week. Will Schaefer has been on the field quite a bit. Um, James Jonkum has been a key fixture as like a sub linebacker or the starting linebacker for second team. Like there's a lot of linebackers here that I think are going to play play their own roles and be able to you know generate some kind of I wouldn't call it a controversy but more of like a like a committee approach at the linebacker spot because even though Trey Brown and Juju Mitchell have looked good it's just the other guys have looked equally as good crew Jackson has looked very very good will Schaefer in my opinion looks like maybe the best linebacker on the field I don't know if I'm willing to go just that far yet, but he does look very, very good. And then Caleb McCullough has earned a lot of playing time, and he's also looked very quality. In the secondary, it's pretty much what we've come to know. Roe Torrance is very good. Xavier Alford is very good. And they have a very good problem to have at the other corner spots. Mason Williams and Ed Woods have been battling it out all week for team one reps, and both of them look more than capable of starting on the outside. Jordan Clark. Looks like a certified leader out there. Uh, across from Alfred, there's been some rotation at the other safety spot. You've had Chris Edmonds has been practicing with second team for most of the week, getting rotated every once in a while. He's still very good. Shamari Simmons getting a lot of time. Montana Warren is really standing out. I do want to talk about standouts here uh, in just a moment. But overall, the defense has just looked a lot better than I think many of us, myself included, thought it was going to so far through practice and it, obviously it's just practice there's a lot of time for things to change and this isn't necessarily what we're going to see once the season rolls around but it is very promising at least that much guys i got to talk to you about our friends over at linkedin because if you're looking to generate better production for your small business then you'll want to check out linkedin jobs you want to be a hundred percent sure that you get access to the best qualified candidates because these days every potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager. That's why you want to check out LinkedIn jobs. LinkedIn jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. You can do this in minutes, add your job. And once you do that, put the purple hashtag hiring frame on your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it really easy to focus on the candidate with just the right skills and experience. So you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. And as you know, it is so important to get that right team member and have that positive and measurable impact on your business. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions will apply. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Wherever you get those podcasts, hit like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. We're getting back into practice content this week. 
We'll mix it up with some conference talk. I'm sure there will be plenty of other stuff to talk about in the meantime. So wherever you're getting in those podcasts, hit like and subscribe. All right. I want to talk some some more quarterback because this is obviously a position that is so important for the future of Arizona State. Quarterback is the most important position on the football field, period. Arizona State, for the most part over the last 10 years, has had pretty good continuity at the quarterback position. Taylor Kelly was a starter for three years. Manny Wilkins was a starter for three years. Jaden Daniels was a starter for three years. You had one year of Berkovici, but he was very, very good in that year. After that, you had a year of Emory Jones and Trenton Bourget with very up and down play that at the end of the day really was just not enough to win you enough football games. We go into this year with a new coaching staff, with a new philosophy, with new offense, and it's it's just so pivotal that whoever the starting quarterback is is going to be able to figure this out, put together the best unit, and hopefully lead you to some wins. Arizona State has really made it like a two-man race this week. I do not expect that to continue. In fact, by the end of the week, there was a third party involved that everybody knows who it is that is going to be able to shake this competition up. Trenton Borgay has been getting the vast majority of the first team reps. That much I do expect to stay the same. I don't know that Borgay is going to be knocked off of the top spot. If he is, then I would anticipate whoever gets first team reps starting tomorrow probably gets them for the whole week. That's what I would anticipate at the quarterback spot is either Trenton Borgay continues to have first team reps and they just rotate other guys in, or he is usurped of quarterback one for this week and maybe next week as the other guys behind him get those opportunities. Drew Pine has been the guy who's breathing down Borgay's neck. Pine had a really rough start to last week, but he really did end the last two to three days of practice on a very high note, and he looks much better than what he had done previously with the team during practices. This is exactly what you were hoping for in a classic iron sharpens iron kind of mentality. Hopefully these quarterbacks will just be able to make each other better, but of course there is a third name in Jaden Rashada, and Rashada has looked like a freshman. And I mean that in the best way possible. This is this is a guy who's just got the game to learn. You know, the, he's going up against a defense that has a lot of seniors and it has a lot of guys who've been around. The defensive line is Deshaun Mallory, a graduate transfer on, on the interior. You've got two veteran uh, linebackers. You've got veteran guys in the secondary that are seniors or older. Like you've got uh, Shamari Simmons and D Ford in the secondary that are graduate guys. Juju Mitchell and Trey Brown are graduate guys at the linebacker spot. There's just a lot of veteran guys on this defense that you can't necessarily look at Jaden Rashada's performance and say that he's played terrible. He's played like a freshman. He's just learning the next level of uh, of the of the game. But at the same time, he has flashed some very very promising upside here. He's got a pretty deep ball. He can absolutely float that thing and just drop it in the bread basket. He had a handful of those throws where he was just able to lead the receiver perfectly to the point where it doesn't matter how good a defense you have, no matter how good the coverage is, that ball's getting there. And as long as the receiver can catch it, there's just not much you can do. Rashada has had those moments. He has had more than his fair share of looking brilliant. But he's also made some boneheaded plays. He's thrown interceptions. He's thrown in the double coverage. He's not perfect. And to me, this definitely puts him behind the other two guys. But what's noteworthy is by the end of the week, he was getting rotated in with some of the first team guys, with some of the second team guys. He was getting more opportunities to be able to play with the guys that you anticipate to either be starters or see the football field a lot. This is a very encouraging sign from Kenny Dillingham and his staff that they want to get Rashada out there and they want to give Rashada every opportunity to win the job. Like, yes, at the end of the day, it does feel like a two person race between Pine and Borgay, but you shouldn't just forget about Rashada. Like 
Arizona State in its history as a football program has only ever had one true freshman start week one, and that was Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels is a borderline five-star prospect. Rashada is still a very talented guy and could do that. You know, we still have, what, like three weeks of practice? Yeah, we've got just about mm, three full weeks. Three full weeks left of practice from what I'm looking at. That's plenty of time for Rashada to find a way to stand out and the guys ahead of him to absolutely crumble. But at the end of the day, the quarterback position has definitely been the most noteworthy headline from practices this week and the one position that everybody is going to be paying the most attention to. It's definitely lived up to the hype of being that competition and being that position where it feels like anybody could win. Four days been getting all the all the first team reps to start practice. But Pine's getting involved. Now Jaden Rashada is getting involved. The quarterback position as a whole is definitely starting to heat up competition-wise. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. Hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. I'll be keeping you guys in touch with all the news that's going around with the team in terms of training camp coverage and a little bit of everything else. You guys won't want to miss it. Here are some overall thoughts from practice this week. Last week, the quarterback position looks like a competition in, in the best way possible. I don't I don't see like a bunch of scrubs out there. I see guys who are starting for power five teams. I think Borgay is a starter for a power five team. I think Pine is a starter for a power five team. I think Jaden Rashada is a starter. It, ugh. Jaden Rashada is a starter for a power five team. You've got quality quarterback play. It's just a matter of getting that figured out. Offensive line, I think it's starting to gel. I think guys like Joey Ramos have really stepped up into leadership roles, and they're commanding those guys around them to get better as well. Isaiah Glass has looked pretty solid. Uh, you want to see better play from the center spot. I think Lee Fontano is good. Ben Bray has had some really bad snaps, and I hope that that gets cleaned up because not only is Ben Bray the backup center, but I think he's one of the next best offensive linemen on the team. So if he can clean that up, you're here for it. Uh, Aaron Frost and Emmett Bully are in a absolute dogfight for the right tackle spot. And I think that you'll be in good shape with whoever it is. Overall, I think the line is definitely getting cleaned up. You have tons of weapons. It's the guys that we've mentioned before, but it's the backups as well. I think Jake Smith might be one of the best kept secrets on this team. He scored seven touchdowns as a freshman at Texas and then just hasn't been able to get on the football field because of health. He looks healthy. He looks like the former four-star, highly graded four-star prospect that he was coming out of Notre Dame prep for Arizona. And if he's able to get onto the football field, this feels like a player that is going to be able to make an impact. Wouldn't surprise me if Jake Smith plays football this year and is able to stay healthy and all that good stuff. It wouldn't surprise me if he ended the year as a number three receiver. He looks that promising. But it's not just him. Stavall looks good. Giovanni Sanders looks good. Uh, you've seen some flashes from Troy O'Meara. There's there's lots of good things to talk about. I already mentioned the tight end position looks great. Defensive line looks good. It looks deep. CJ Fight is a monster. BJ Green is a monster. Prince Dorba and Garen Stansberry have flashed. Defensive line looks good. Uh, Deshaun Mallory looks amazing. Deshaun Mallory looks like everything you were promised. He's going to help impact that defensive line in a massive way. You've also got really good reps out of Tristan Monday and Sam Benjamin too. So defensive line is great. Linebacker, lots of rotation, lots of guys who have looked quality. I'm keeping my eye on Crew Jackson. I encourage you guys to also be keeping an eye out for Crew Jackson, number 43 for the Sun Devils. Big, long, athletic kid. Definitely feels like somebody that the team is going to want to get onto the football field in one way or another. And keep in mind, he was recruited as like a safety linebacker kind of hybrid, that money backer role that the Arizona Cardinals tried to introduce with Dale Buchanan. That's what Crew Jackson feels like. So I, I just wouldn't be surprised they tried to get him on the field. Secondary, Roe Torrance amazing. He's going to be one of the best corners in the Pac-12 this year. Outside of him, Mason Williams and Ed Woods are just making each other better. Jordan Clark on the inside feels great. He's also working out with the safety, so don't be surprised if he's all over the field. Xavier Alford looks like a monster at safety. 
the guy opposite him, Shamari Simmons has looked quality. Chris Edmonds has looked quality. Montana Warren, another guy to watch out for. Montana Warren and CJ Fight are three star prospects out of Texas. And if they had played anywhere else in the country, they would have been four stars. Those kids look like they're going to be Pac-12 freshmen. Like, uh, all freshman team is what I mean. They look like they're going to be that kind of high-impact level players. I am so beyond excited for Montana Warren and for CJ Fight this year. Don't be surprised if those guys end up making some big-time plays and find some significant playing time, and maybe even by the end of the season, are starting. At a minimum, for 2024, when they are guaranteed starting spots, all but guaranteed, I should say, they're going to be monsters. Bottom line, this team looks confident. This team is playing with an edge that we haven't seen in the Herm Edwards era. These guys look determined. And you talk to them, and not only are they saying the right things, but they just... They're so confident the way that they talk. I've talked to Joey Ramos multiple times this week. He's the same guy off the field that he is on the field. A confident player. Chris Edmonds, a confident player. All of these guys are practicing what they preach. It's not just talk. They truly believe everything that they say. And they put it on the field as well. Will that equate to wins? Who knows? No idea. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But in the meantime, I've really enjoyed practice this week. And I've really enjoyed seeing these guys work their you-know-what's off. And the coaches, too. Hats off to the coaches. Vince Amy is so determined to get that defensive line in shape, and they look great. Brian Carrington has worked very hard with the corners. Rashad Samples has worked very hard with the receivers. Jason Mons has worked very hard with the tight ends. All of the assistant coaches are putting in the time and effort. They're lifting these kids up, and they're they're doing the right things too. Because Kenny Dillingham had the offense running bear crawls late in the week. I can't remember if it was Friday or Saturday. I think it was Friday because the players just weren't trying hard enough. And he had them running bear claws or bear crawls, quote, until I feel like it. But then on Saturday, there's an ice cream truck that pulls up. Like Dillingham is rewarding these kids for their efforts, but they have to earn it. They're not just getting babied. They're not just getting punished. They are given their rewards when they work hard enough. They had popsicles on Monday. They had an ice cream truck at the end of the week. They're taking breaks. They're getting lots of water. They're getting, they're getting praised by the coaches and they're equally getting ripped into, but it's constructive. At the end of the day, this coaching staff has definitely done a very good job of introducing this kind of culture to Arizona state where you believe that they're going to be able to get things back on track a lot sooner rather than later. I believe in Kenny Dillingham and his vision. The coaches believe in Kenny Dillingham and his vision. And the players believe in Kenny Dillingham and his vision. When you have all that added up together, it feels like a team that's going to be back on track sooner rather than later. As I have alluded to before, I think this team on paper, when you look at the schedules, four wins, I think they're going to, I think they're going to find a way to win more than that. I think they're going to find a way to be in, in, in range of a bowl game all year. Again, will they be? I have no idea. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But in the meantime, practices have been promising. And I am very encouraged by what I'm seeing. I only hope that I can illustrate that point to you guys. And that you guys are also doing your research wherever you can find that content to be able to stay in touch as well. I know that Rivals and Devil's Digest, where I'm helping out right now, has been a great source of that. I know 24-7 with... Uh, Sun Devil Source has been very good. There's all sorts of different outlets to be able to get your practice coverage for. So make sure that you stay in touch. But of course, I will be one of your main sources of content as well. And this podcast is free and available on all platforms. So, I mean, you don't have to pay for it. And I'm here to recap you guys. So thank you for tuning in. That's all that I have for you guys today. Tomorrow's episode of the show, we'll be kind of previewing this upcoming week. They got Tonta Zona at the end of the week. We're going to have two practices until then to kind of get us started. We're going to take a look at what I'm going to be taking a look out for 
for the upcoming week. I want to know what you guys are going to be paying attention to as well. But remember, wherever you're getting your podcast, hit like and subscribe and turn on those notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. And stay in touch by following me on Twitter slash X at RichieBrad36 and the podcast at LO underscore Sun Devils. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I will see you tomorrow. Until then, you keep it locked right here on Locked on Sun Devils.